Okay, in this video we're going to go ahead and, and uh, finish the design of the Class B power amplifier by replacing the uh, ideal components with non-ideal components. So here you can see that compared to the last video, I've gone ahead and modified the test bench uh, just a, a bit uh, to make it easier to read. I've got my input on the left side of the amplifier, my output on the right side of the amplifier, and I've got my gate bias coming in at the bottom, and my drain bias coming in at the top. You can also see that I want a short circuit at the gate and drain bias uh, because we're doing a short circuited matching stub. Uh, and in order to provide that, I've made a bias T here with a large choke inductor towards the supply and a large bypass cap to ground uh, with a 10 microfarad cap. And I've done this on both the drain bias line and the gate bias line. Everything else is more or less the same. Now, if we go and run this simulation with this setup, we can look at the results, uh, and they're kind of what we would expect. So if we zoom in here, you can see that we have a 1 dB compression point uh, that's right around 43 dBm, and the efficiency at the 1 dB compression point is about 25%. Uh, you can also see, if we look at the drain voltage and current waveforms that this is more or less operating in something like a class b mode we don't have a pure sinusoid uh, for the drain current uh, so we are definitely taking advantage of reducing the conduction angle uh, you can also see that the output voltage is rich in harmonics that's why instead of looking like a sine wave it, it has uh, this triangular shape and indeed if we look at the output spectrum we can see Quite a bit of harmonic content so you can see a strong fundamental component strong second harmonic third harmonic and uh, so on and so forth and that's what's causing the appearance of distortion uh, in the voltage waveform at the output now we also uh, can look at the pae as a function of power level you can see at uh, 43 dbm we were right at about 25 percent and you can see our uh, our power added efficiency uh, characteristic, of course, as we drive the amplifier further into saturation, uh, you know, past its compression point, uh, you can see that the efficiency increases dramatically. And of course, below the 1 dB compression point, the efficiency decreases dramatically. All right, so uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and start replacing components in the power amplifier. So we're going to push into the amplifier uh, I've already taken the liberty of adding an M sub component that was in line with the uh, M sub uh, component that we were looking at in one of our earlier videos on doing a uh, stub match. Uh, we're going to start replacing these ideal transmission line components with stub components, and to do so, we're going to use our handy line calc. Now, here uh, we have the parameters uh, for the substrate uh, as set by uh, or, uh, as set uh, uh, to match the parameters of this M sub component that we've put into the schematic. Uh, we're going to be doing this design at 850 megahertz, and let's go ahead and replace the first component. So we want our first component to be a 50 ohm line with an electric length of 175.93 degrees. If we synthesize this, we'll see that the physical width and length of that component are 36.2 mils and uh, 3832 mils respectively. So I'm going to go ahead and add this inline component into the design. And I'm going to set the parameter values. That was 36.2 and I think 3832 mils. And yep, that looks correct. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this uh, component. Actually, what I'm going to do for the time being, just to make sure we don't mess anything up, is make a copy of the component. I'm going to delete the original. I'm going to deactivate that copy, and I'm going to put the new one in place. All right. So let's go ahead and save this, and let's go ahead and rerun our simulation. Oops. We need to go back up to the top level, and now we can rerun our simulation. Ideally, we haven't broken anything, 
uh, when we put that component in. Of course, oh, we did. So let me take a moment to figure out what we broke. Okay, I've isolated what we broke. Uh, it turns out that the significant uh, digits or the decimals uh, here uh, and the length of the transmission line were uh, fairly critical. Uh, so I had truncated to 3832, but the 0.110 uh, actually mattered. Uh, now that means that this is probably not a very good design uh, in the sense that we don't want to be that sensitive to any components. Uh, but uh, for the time being, we'll go ahead and keep replacing the uh, other components and be a bit more careful about uh, including uh, extra digits to make sure that uh, our amplifier is going to work. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about uh, sensitivity in the design uh, in future videos. All right, so our next component uh, had an electric length of 3.996 degrees. Uh, we'll synthesize that one. And I'm going to replace the T-line 3 component right here. And subsequently, I'll also replace uh, T-line 1 and T-line 2. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video for a moment, get those done, and then we will resume. All right, so here you can see that we've replaced all the transmission lines with M-line components. And uh, you can see, of course, the stub matching uh, is, is completed. Now, one thing I will say, uh, these component links are quite long. Part of this has to do with the fact that we're working at 850 megahertz. Uh, so we have a fairly long wavelength, uh, which is what's making these component links uh, that long. Uh, the, the length here, 38, 32 mils, is, is actually you know, 3.8 inches. So this would be a pretty big component. All right, so now we have all of our stuff replaced. I've also changed the bypass capacitors to 10 microfarads just to make sure that they're not attenuating the signal at all. Uh, and now we're going to go ahead and go up to our top level simulation and rerun everything and do a comparison. All right, so the simulation uh, reran. Uh, a couple of nice things. You can see that the uh, output harmonics are a little bit more suppressed uh, with our microstrip components here. So these are just limiting the bandwidth a little bit of the higher frequency components. Uh, another thing that you notice is that uh, if we look at the 1 dB compression point again, so let's zoom in here, uh, you can see that, that we can actually drive the amplifier a little bit harder. Uh, so it looks like our 1 dB compression is somewhere right around 43 and a half dBm, uh, and uh, our, op our power added efficiency has gone up to 27% as a result of that. Now, this is because when we put the real transmission line components in, uh, there are some second order effects uh, of the real transmission line components that are changing the impedance match a little bit, and in this case, they changed it to a bit more favorable of a match. So we are getting a bit more output power uh, and a bit higher efficiency uh, at the, at the uh, 1 dB compression point, which is all good. Now, one last step that you might think about is you could easily uh, go in and make the electric links of these components optimizable and add an optimization engine uh, into this whole thing uh, and try and optimize to improve the efficiency and output power. Another thing that you could do is try and push this into slightly more class B operation, for instance, by reducing the gate bias on this transistor a little bit, uh, and we can uh, we can randomly uh, change it to 2.75 and see what happens. Now, we haven't load pulled this, uh, so it might not be favorable, but these are the kinds of things that you can do if you want to start playing around and trying to improve the amplifier. Uh, now, you can indeed see that actually reducing that gate bias did help a bit, uh, so we got lucky there. Uh, the uh, output power stayed at about 43 and a half dBm, and our efficiency improved by about 3% to 30%. Uh, so, uh, of course, the distortion also increased. If you uh, look at the output waveform, you can see that it got back to looking a bit more distorted than it was before, but it's more efficient. All right, so we'll go ahead and stop there with this power amplifier, uh, and, and, and uh, we'll have some future videos on doing different microwave simulations. Uh, we're going to start looking at passive components and maybe uh, low noise amplifiers uh, shortly. Uh, so with that, I'll go ahead and stop and uh, talk to you next time.